I'm Katie Birkwood. I'm the Rare Books and Special Collections Librarian here at the Royal College of Physicians and I'm the curator of our exhibition Scholar, Courtier Magician, The Lost Library of John Dee. John Dee was one of Tudor England's most extraordinary and enigmatic figures. He was an outstanding polymath interested in a very great number of branches of learning. He advised Queen Elizabeth and her court on a range of subjects including navigation and medicine. He contrived to try and speak with angels via a medium called Edward Kelly and he also wrote treaties on mathematics, astrology and other topics. It might seem a bit of a surprise that an institution like the Royal College of Physicians has a library of books belonging to someone like John Dee. The story of how they came to the RCP is a little bit complicated. John Dee had this amazing library of over 3,000 printed books and about 1,000 manuscripts and he'd amassed this by the start of the 1580s. In 1583 he went travelling in Europe and left his library and his house in the care of his brother-in-law and his brother-in-law let other people into the library and many of these people stole books and objects that belonged to Dee. When Dee returned to England in 1588 he discovered that his library had been ransacked. He was able to reclaim some of his books from some of the people who had taken them but many of them were lost forever. Some of those books had been stolen by a man called Nicholas Saunder and later in his life or after his death his books passed either directly or via another person we've not identified, to the Marquis of Dorchester, Henry Pierpont. After Pierpont's death in 1680, his family gave his substantial library to the Royal College of Physicians, and it was in that library that these books were found, and that's why we still have those books today. One of the ways we're able to determine that books that we now own belong to Dee is because he very commonly, very often marked his books. This could be as simple as underlining individual words or passages, but very often it extends to more elaborate annotations in the margins of his books. These marginalia include um, little diagrams, perhaps. He often drew a horoscope, charted out a horoscope in the margins. He might also draw a pointing hand that we call a manicule, which is a, a little hand with a finger sticking out and the thumb raised, like you see on a signpost even today, to say, this is an important bit, look at me. Probably my favourite is the Cicero. It's the complete works of Cicero in two volumes, published in Paris in 1539-1540. And it was annotated very heavily by Dee when he was a student in Cambridge. His annotations are dated 1545 and 1546. And a lot of these annotations are very studious, very careful, very precise and very neat. But every now and again you see a flash of a very different side of Dee. Playful, impulsive, whimsical. And perhaps the epitome of this is the illustration of a ship he's drawn in the bottom right-hand corner of one of the pages next to a short extract of a poem about the foaming, frothing seas. And the ship is beautifully drawn and entirely expressive of a playful side of Dee that you wouldn't necessarily imagine he had when you read about him. On our first floor gallery, we'll have just about 50 books from John Dee's library displayed alongside some of the objects that he used during his life and that have been associated with him since, and two magnificent portraits which we're very grateful to have on loan from the Wellcome Library and from the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. One of the objects we'll have on display is a very small crystal ball which is believed to have been owned by Dee. This crystal ball comes with a document signed by the herbalist Nicholas Culpepper in the 17th century, stating that he acquired the crystal ball from John Dee's son, Arthur. Culpepper says that he tried for a while to use the crystal ball to contact spirits, but that he found it was evil and was causing him problems, so he desisted from doing so and gave up practice with it. I don't know whether we can believe Culpepper on this point or not, but it's lovely to have such an evocative item coming to be included in the display. When you come to the exhibition, you'll have an opportunity to see some of the marks made in the moment by one of the finest minds of Tudor England. John Dee's annotations give us a real opportunity to get close to someone who is both hugely popular and still very largely unknown. I think anyone who's a doodler or who has ever written a sneaky comment in the margin of a book will find something to excite them in this exhibition. It's remarkable how little human nature changes over the centuries and we can see Dee's marks, his notes, his comments, his little scribbles as he was thinking his grand thoughts which really help us to connect to the personality of a remarkable man. Mm -hmm.